So we want to talk about finding the prime factorization of the following numbers. Now there are several ways of doing this, okay? Let's take a look at the example 120. Now last time we were doing this, you could do a factor tree. That's one way of doing it. I want to show you that there are two different ways and you still get the same thing. But what I need you guys to know, I need, to know, I need you guys to know your most common prime factors. So your, the, the prime numbers that we can work with, the smallest ones, would be, well, let's make a list here. So your first prime numbers would be 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, and so on, right? These are your first prime numbers. So one way to go about finding a prime factorization is to do it systematically. You don't need to bounce around. Start with the first prime number that we have here, 2, and see, does 2 go into 120? Does 2 go into 120 evenly? How many times does 2 go into 120? So 2 goes into 120 60 times. We're kind of doing this upside down, but just trust me on this. Now, you keep using that prime factor until you can't use it anymore. Does 2 go into 60? OK, so how many times does 2 go into 60? It goes in 30 times, right? Does 2 go into 30? Of course 2 goes into 30 because it's an even number, right? And it goes in 15 times. Now does 2 go into 15? No, 15's not even. So we're done using 2. Does 3 go into 15? So 3 goes into 15 five times. Now once you get to the very end here where you have a prime number, you don't need to go any further. I don't need you to see how many times does 5 go into, <coughs> no, 5's prime, you're done. So all of the numbers that you have out here, all of these guys form your prime factorization. So what we can say is that the number 120 is made up of these three factors of 2, a factor of 3, and a factor of 5. Those are the numbers that you would multiply. These are the prime numbers that you would multiply to get 120. And here's the thing. Every prime factorization is unique. There is no other way to break down 120 using prime numbers. You can't have some joker come along and say, well, you know what? Uh, I can rewrite 120 as 7 times 11 times. No, you can't. You're, you're, you're stupid, man. This is the only way to do this using prime factors. Now, sometimes you will see this condensed using exponents. So this is 2 to the what power? I've got three factors of 2. That's why well, I've got the 3 there. Times 3 times 5. So that's your prime factorization. This is what I expect you guys to be able to show me on a test or a quiz. Both of them? Or the one that you're boxing uh, Either one. And for some of the things that we'll do later, even when I was in my 0310 class earlier today, we actually had the number 120, and we wrote it like this. And writing it that way allows us to find all of the different factors, all of the different numbers that can go into 120 evenly, instead of just looking at purely the prime factors. So if I were making a list of, say, factor pairs from this guy, let me just show you this real quick. Of course, factor pairs being a pair of numbers that multiply to give you 120. Well, you can always start off by saying 1 and 120. That's a pretty simple one, okay? You know that 2 goes into 120 because you already did the math, and you said that was 60 times, right? For everything else, we can look at the prime factorization to see if these numbers go into it. Does 3 go into 120? Here is 3 as a factor, right? So you know that 3 goes in here. Now look at, look at this. If 3 goes in here, look at the other factors that make up 120. You have 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. So when you multiply the other factors together, what do you have? 2 times 2 times 2 is just 8. 8 times 5 is 40. If I were to keep going here, go to the next number, does 4 go into 120? Is 4 a prime number? No. No, but what numbers make up 4 in terms of multiplication? 2 times 2. So you see I've got 2 and 2 here, right? So 4 goes in here. 
So here's the four. What do the rest of these factors make up? What's two times three times five? It's 30, right? Two times three is six times five is 30. You know what? I know that five goes into 120 because I see the five right here, right? And what do the rest of the factors make up? What's two times two times two times three? Well, this guy is four. That guy is six. What's four times six? And notice I didn't have to do any division there. I could look at the factors and figure out how many times five goes into 120. I'm giving this one to you. Six goes into 120. You see six right here. Do you guys see that? There's six. What do the rest of the factors make up? What's two times two times five? That's 20. Man, this number has a lot of factors, doesn't it? Does seven go into 120? Justice, you say no. Why do you say no? Do, do you see a factor of seven here? No. And since seven is prime, you would have to see seven as one of these prime factors. So seven doesn't work. How about eight? Can you guys see eight? Where's the eight? Two times two times two. So there's eight, and what do the rest <coughs> of the factors give you? Here's your eight. What's the rest of it? 15. It's 15. Does nine go into 120? Is nine a factor of 120? Is nine prime or composite? Mm -hmm. It's composite. What are the factors that make up nine? Three and three. How many factors of three do I have in 120? Do I have enough factors to give me 9? So 9 doesn't go. Does 10 go into 120? Even without looking at the factors, you know that because 120 ends in a 0, right? You know some of these rules for divisibility. So look, here's how you see the 10. The 10 is 2 times 5, right? That leaves you with the factors 2 times 2 times 3. What's 2 times 2 times 3? That's 12. All of these numbers are factors for 120. I don't have to guess and check about this. I can use that prime factorization to see <coughs> what goes in there. And I've got a problem that's up here on the board that we were doing in 0310 where having a list of all these factors really helps us figure out how I'm supposed to break down something that's a lot more complicated than just the number 120. It's about seeing the different ways of breaking down 120 and it all starts with the prime factorization that we have here. Now suppose you didn't do this though. Suppose you don't like the division that I did there. That's fine. Suppose you are more a fan of the factor tree that we did last time. When I look at 120, I'm trying to think of two numbers that go into 120, two factors that I could break this down using. And the first thing that comes to my mind when I see a number that ends in zero is to look at this as 10 times a number. And of course, 120 is 10 times what? So automatically, I mean, just very, very quickly, you have 120 broken down to two much smaller numbers that are easier to handle. How can I break down 10? That's 2 times 5. Both of these guys are prime numbers, right? So we're going to just circle these guys so we don't lose them. Now, how would you break down 12? 2 times 6, I have another prime number, so I'm going to stop there. And then 6 breaks down how? 2 times 3, so both of these guys are prime numbers. And you see that all of the numbers that I have circled are basically the end of the line for that particular branch of the factor tree. When you get to a prime number, stop. Don't try to say, well, 2 is 1 times 2. I'm just going to break him down more. Is 1 a prime number? No, we went over that on Monday. It's not a prime number. How many factors of 2 do you see? Three. You see the same three factors of 2. You see your factor of 3. And you see your factor of 5. So it's still the exact same thing. Do you all agree? Now let's make things just a little bit more challenging. What if I gave you a larger number? If I gave you the number 700? You've got several different ways of doing this. You could do the division 
that did over here on the side, or you could do a factor tree. It's up to you. Before we move forward, uh, yes. the composite numbers, are these just, are these the only composite numbers? Composite numbers are numbers that have more than two different factors. A prime number is a number that has two distinct or different factors, one and itself, but they have to be different. So when you look down here with these factor pairs, you, you see that 120, the numbers that go into 120 is more than just 1 and 120. You have all of these other numbers as well. So 120 is definitely a composite number. But when we do a prime factorization, all of these numbers here are prime numbers. You break these guys down until they can't be broken down anymore. So now let's look at 700. Do you think 700 is prime or composite? If you think that it's prime, then you're saying that there are only two numbers that go into 700, 1 and 700. And I think you guys know that this is going to be false. Because if I were to put a dollar sign in front of 700, and I said $700, how might you guys be carrying around $700? Do you have just one $700 bill? No. 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 How might you carry around $700? In 20s? Oh, so you can break this down into 20s, right? Oh, or you could be like this woman I saw at the bank yesterday. I don't know how many $100 bills that she got, but it kept on going. I thought she was on a game show or something. But you can have seven bills, right? Is that how we say $100? Seven Benjamins? No. I saw the latest design of the $100 bill, and I thought it was Monopoly money. It really threw me off. But you know you can break this down using 7 times 100, right? Yeah. And if you can break this down using something other than 1 and the number, then it's not prime and it's composite. Now, isn't 7 a prime number? Mm -hmm. I'm going to circle this guy because he can't go any further. How do you think you'd break down 100? What's a nice way of breaking that down? Mm -hmm. 10 times 10. Are these guys prime? No, then keep going. How do you break down 10? 2 times 5, and both of these guys are prime. How about this 10? It's still a 2 times 5, right? Notice that what I'm doing here with this number is I'm breaking it down strictly in terms of multiplication. These are called factors. So 700 is equal to, if you put these guys in order, 2 times 2 times 5 times 5, times 7. Now if I were to ask you for the prime factorization, this is good enough. You might want to condense this using exponents and say what? 2 squared, 5 squared, and just 7 to the first, right? Because you only have one factor of 7. Questions about that one? Why not 10 times 70? Yeah. You know what? That That's a good question, Karen. You say 10 times 70, right? Yeah. So maybe I'm wrong. And maybe you're righter than I am. I doubt that. <laughs> so you say 10 times 70, right? Uh -huh. is, does everybody agree that $700, if you looked at it that way, could be yeah. $70, $10 bills? Okay. Mm -hmm. Are either one of these guys prime? No. no. no, 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 no. How could you break down 10? 2 times 5, both of these factors are prime. How might you break down 70? How did you break it down, Karen? No, 35, sorry. How did you break down 70? Oh, I did it wrong. <laughs> well, you could do 10 times 7. You could do 10 times 7. I'm totally okay with that. You could have done 2 times 35. You could have done 5 times 14. Probably wouldn't have gone there, but 7 is prime, so I'm going to circle this guy. And 10 can be broken down further to be 2 times 5. And both of these guys are prime. They still get the same answer. You do still get the same answer. The order may be a little bit different, right? But everything is written in terms of what operation? Multiplication. multiplication. And the great thing about multiplication is that the order doesn't matter. That's why I like it. You may do it one way. You may do it another way. I may do it my way.
But if we're still using multiplication, if everybody's using multiplication to break it down, we all get the same answer. <coughs> And it's going to end up being 2 squared, 5 squared, and 7 for the factors. Any questions about that one? All right, let's do one more. We can fit one more on this page. And let's look at the number 216. Now, 216 may be a little bit larger than what you're used to dealing with, and you may not know exactly how to break this down in a way that's very useful. Like we did the 700 as 7 times 100, that was very quick, and we kept going further after that. But look at 216. What's something that you know for certain <coughs> goes into 216? One. one goes in there, but that helps me not at all. But 216 is even, so I know that 2 goes in here, right? You may say, but Mr. Craig, 2 is a small number. I want something larger that goes in there. Use 2 first, and it'll break the 216 down into something smaller. And then you find another number. It makes it even smaller. It may take a few more steps, but you'll be better this way. What's half of 216? 108. Half of 216 is 108, right? Now, 2 is a prime number, so I'm going to circle this guy. Well, 108. Maybe it's still not in your comfort zone yet, so maybe you break that down using what? Nine oh, you could do 9 and 12, right? If, you're, if you don't know the 9 and 12, you could use 2 again, right? Mm -hmm. Stick with what you know. So I'm going to go with what you said, 9 and 12, because I feel like I'm going to run out of room here. Are either one of these prime numbers? No, no. no so you have to keep going. How do you break down 9? Three times three, so both of these guys are prime. That makes me happy. How about 12? How do you break this down? We said four times three, right? So three is prime, and then four breaks down how? Two times two. And both of those guys are prime. So let's see, 216 is equal to, how many factors of two do I have? And how many factors of three do I have? Three. I have three of each of these guys. So in a condensed way, using my exponents, that's two to the third power times three to the third power. Do you all agree with that? Well, that's your prime factorization. And being able to look at numbers in terms of their prime factors will help us with the next part, which will be to write our fractions. So don't forget we were doing fractions. We're going to be writing fractions in lowest terms.